Hi there, I am Bonnie McCaffrey, and thank you so much for coming back for another vidcast this month. I have found a group here at the Birmingham Quilt Show, um, and this is a group of four quilters who have gotten together, and their exhibit has to do with heavy metal. And what exactly does that mean? Well, heavy metal was a theme that we chose two and a half years ago because the area of the British Isles that we come from, Newcastle upon Tyne, in the northeast of England, was very, very involved in the Industrial Re Revolution. There's a lot of um, industry in the area, concert steelworks, killip lead mining, shipbuilding. Uh, we even have, a, going further back, the Sanctuary Knocker in Durham Cathedral made of metal. So we felt as though it was a rich source for um, the theme of this particular exhibit. Okay, so let's take a look at your work. Let's step back here to this piece here. This piece of work is called Honouring Tyneside. It's based on all the shipbuilding that was part of Tyneside for over a hundred years, but sadly has fallen into decay and no longer exists along the Tyne. Uh, in here we have um, the ships, the girders of the ships, uh, cranes, this is a crane here, and uh, it's, it shows the, all the names of all the shipyards that it, uh, unfortunately no longer exist on the River Tyne. Okay, so tell me about this piece here. This piece is uh, called Heavy Metal Thunder. It's really based around the uh, Steppenwolf song uh, from the film Easy Rider because I'm really interested in Harley Davidson motorbikes. Do you ride? No, unfortunately, I don't. I would I love to. Should, I think she should get a motorcycle ride. Somebody I'd... take her, please. This is a journal quilt. So for the last year, once a month, I made one of these pieces with the specific purpose of joining them together to make heavy metal thunder. Okay, so on the motorcycle theme, we're going to go right to Born to be Wild. Absolutely. This one is a piece of hand-dyed fabric, complete with photo screen, photo images, um, of photographs that I took of the Harley, my own photographs, but printed onto fabric and appliqued. Wonderful. We got to get you on a Harley. <laughs> this is another shipbuilding piece of work. It's a whole cloth quilt, hand dyed, screen printed, coloured with a Markle paint stick to create the three dimensional effect. The drag chains were very, very symbolic. It was a sound that was prevalent as each ship was launched into the Tyne. This is dream on Bonnie because I don't actually own a Harley and I'd really love one. She needs to at least ride one. Somebody take her out. <laughs> I think we're going to get you a Harley ride I out of this. So. I hope so. Good. So dream on and this is about having... Is that your dream to have a Harley? Well, it would be nice to easy ride across America, actually, yes. One of my ambitions. <laughs> there we go, and I think dreams do come true. Hope so. And you have one more piece, right? I do. Okay, let's go look. And this one? This one's really special, Bonnie, because uh, this year I actually visited the States and saw some work by the late John Chamberlain, a sculptor who uses lots of um, automobiles and this sort of thing. And I really wanted to translate it because I, f I felt as though the work that I saw really fitted into the heavy metal theme and it inspired me to produce this piece of work which is called Love and Fate in 78. Love it. Now we're on to Anne Tuck and this is your piece. What, what is this one called? This one's called Sanctuary and it has to do with the Sanctuary Knocker which is on Durham Cathedral door. The first thing I thought of was the, the Sanctuary Knocker so I went to Durham Cathedral to take photographs um, and I found that apart from the sanctuary knocker there was very little metal in, in the cathedral. Really? It was mainly carved wood. Oh, and I'm thinking and, rock. And in any case we couldn't take photographs in the cathedral. So they sent us out into the cloisters and I noticed the stonework in the cloisters and I was really inspired by that because it, they were crumbling the stones and there were these colours and so this oh, is these wonderful. are photographs taken of the, cl the cloister stonework oh and then gosh. printed onto cotton oh that's yes. wonderful okay tell me about this one this one is called wrought iron in the furnace uh, because and I use these colours because they 
the colours of the furnace glowed in, uh, uh, with the reds and yellows. But wrought, wrought iron can be any shape, so that you know when the metal is hot, they shape it. Okay. So, so. Okay, and what kind of metal are we working with here? Well, this again is wrought iron, but for this uh, quilt, I used the inspiration of a wonderful wrought iron gallery in the V&A Museum in London. And uh, they had fences and gates and so on. And I just like the simplicity of this shape. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interpretation of a wrought iron gate. Yes. Yes. Uh, how did you get this on here? Well, this is using print paste that you can just buy, you purchase. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and I, I made a, a stencil to, out of uh, sticky back plastic. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Great. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. And this one, I love, love, love the colors of Thank this you. one. Thank you. Well, this one is about pylons, which is, you know, the, the, the metal, the heavy metal link. Um, my husband is an electrical engineer, so he supplied me with all the words um, uh, which I don't understand and can't spell, but that uh, uh, was quite useful to have him there to tell me, you know, some of the language. Yeah. Um, and the colours are really taken from a, a photograph of um, a computer circuit board, uh, from an electrical circuit board. Wow. Uh, and that's the two things that married together. Yeah. Well, this is an interpretation of a nursery rhyme, which is uh, for want of a nail. The shoe was lost for want of a shoe. The horse was lost for want of a horse. The rider was lost for want of a rider. The battle was lost for want of a battle. The kingdom was lost. And all for the want of a horseshoe nail. So what it is, is a cautionary tale for anybody who's doing a piece of work and maybe quilters as well. You have to prepare well and then everything will work out fine. Okay, so now we have found Rose Stanley and Rose you do more of a dimensional style. I do yes I do. Um, I did some quilting but I've ventured out into uh, figures and it's just grown. It became uh, an obsession really. So I understand. Yes. Okay so who is this guy all studded up and he does look like heavy metal. He is molten slag. Um, it was obvious when we decided to have heavy metal as the title that we had to have a heavy metal figure. So he was one of the first ones I made and my husband is very useful, he's made the guitar um, so he does a bit of hard work for me, uh, the hardware for all of these items. Oh wow. Um, so he was very useful and he's really become one of our favourites because uh, it was sort of a joint thing in a way because my husband helped me do it. Um, so it's, it's sort of special. Okay, so who is this guy? This is Albert. Um, he's uh, modelled on some of the men that work in a foundry. I went to take a lot of photographs in a foundry just to get some images in my head before I started making uh, various figures. And he is typical of the men that work in the foundry. So I set to and out of the photographs used the sort of clothes they wear and just the kind of attitude they had. They're a very special sort of uh, man that works in, in a foundry. Tell me about Ethel. Well, Ethel came about because in the wartime, my mum always worked in uh, factories and she apparently was a whiz on a heavy leave. So she's told us all sorts of stories. So when we came to do heavy metal, I decided I had to have something that was uh, a thought towards my mum. So I asked her what she used to wear and uh, the sort of stories they had. And so Ethel came about and what my mum always said was, even though they had to wear um, overalls and used to get very dirty, they always had beautiful underwear on and keep themselves feminine. So Ethel is actually wearing silk, silk cami knickers. If only we could see those. Indeed, you never will. <laughs> but they always wore their makeup and always had their lovely underwear so that they knew they were still feminine even though they were having to wear really awful overalls and got very dirty. I love that. Okay, tell me about this beautiful fire girl. Well, this came about because when I was in the foundry, it's very dark and smoky and everything's very dull, but the fire and the flames come up from the pots and it's stark and bright and it's wonderful. Uh, the atmosphere is wonderful and 
I could just see a fire spirit hovering in these flames. Um, so when I decided that I would do things with the foundry in mind, I decided I would do something that would represent the flames and the fire. Uh, and fire spirit came about for that reason, because it's, uh, it's a wonderful sight to see the, the colours of flame uh, changing and moving and dancing above the pots. Our fourth artist in the heavy metal is Gillian. Gillian, tell me about your work and how is this metal? Um, I took the opportunity to explore childhood industries that were around in my childhood and concert was where I grew up and they had steelworks there and my dad used to tell me that they overloaded the blast furnaces and then the filters couldn't work couldn't cope with it so all this dust went up in the air oh. and covered the uh, the surrounding town so we got the pink trees in the park and uh, my sister said do you not remember the pink snow in the winter <laughs> so oh. so it really was very very pink um, I've added the um, silver lines because the steelworks made sheet metal for the shipbuilding industry on the River Tyne. Okay, so this also has connection to where you used to live? It, it, it does, yes. It's also a concert. And I started working on some pieces with my mother in. She, my mother was a children's nurse. And then I realised how many connections I did have with the steel uh, works because my mother was the nanny of the managing director's children oh. um, so um, she before she was married and these these are the children these are letters that my father sent to her before they were married oh. Oh. Uh, and this is my father and his two brothers and his cousin all of whom worked in the steelworks yeah. the maps are in 1923 um, printed onto fabric and these little bits of writing, um, I asked some of my school friends um, that I grew up with what they remembered about the steelworks because it closed in 1980. And they wrote some little pieces, which again I transferred onto fabric. Um, when I was a child, I used to spend my holidays in the North Pennines in a place called Weirdale. And just up the valley from Weirdale, they did a lot of lead mining. And this heavy metal machinery is from um, the separation part uh, where they separated the lead, the gleaner, from, from the rocks where it was crushed and separated. Um, so this machinery would have been used about 100 and 120 years ago and the quilt is actually an original antique quilt which would have been made about the same time. Wow. Um, after I bought it, I've, all I've done is to cut it in half. Um, it did have a big tear in it, which I repaired. Wait a second. This is an old quilt. Yep. And you put something on top of it, right? So th it's an old quilt and your art combined. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, ladies, this is an absolutely wonderful exhibit. And thank you all so much for sharing and telling us about your pieces. And, and we're going to get you, Chris, on Harley, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> and thank you all. I hope you'll come back next month to see what I have for you then. Thanks for being with me.